Hi, my name is Ralph with Eminem Ultra Sports. Recently, I did a video on why these self-leveling boards were catching fire, and I'm going to do an update video because I found some more information uh, that I'd like the public to be aware of, um, and it, you know, it kind of concerns me a little bit as well. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, that to me is a concern is the chargers themselves. Um, I had a customer come in and I'll, I'll just show you the charger. Here's the back of the charger. Now if you notice, all you see is CE approved. You do not see what's called UL approved, which means it's underwriters laboratory listed. UL has very strict guidelines. CE does not. If you want to have CE on your product on certain items, and I spoke with Underwriters Laboratory myself today, so um, they're the ones that gave me this information, that on a CE, a company can themselves CE certify their own product. So you can build a charger, plug it in something, it charges it, and go, my charger's safe, now I can sell it and put CE on the back of it. Um, what I am concerned of, and, and well, to let you know what CE is, it, it's approved for being in Europe. The ULs let you know that it's approved for in the United States, and it's been listed and tested and approved by the Underwriters Laboratory. And I would be a little concerned that someone has the capability of certifying their own product. Um, so the lady, when she brought her board in, this was her charger that was in it. Now, what I'm also working on at this point in time with my manufacturer directly um, is being able to have a charger that is UL listed that you can use for your self-leveling boards. Now, it, you must understand, you just can't start slapping chargers on anything. you got to be very careful. And I know this information because I've had customers in here use the wrong lithium-ion charger on the wrong battery and cook the battery. The battery was no longer any good, wasn't going to work. Um, so before I sell a charger out to anyone, I need to make sure that that charger is compatible with the type of battery that's being ran in your unit. Now most of the time what's being ran in units are Panasonic, LGs, um, you will also have Chinese batteries in them. Uh, so I've gotten a an okay on uh, all the different batteries but one that go into them so I'm just waiting for that last uh, okay on that so I can bring UL certified chargers and sell them to people who don't have them that want to just keep their hoverboard and use it because they're not having any problems with it but they want that extra safety barrier to know that they're not going to have any issues um, it's always possible that you can I've had a customer that called me over the weekend. I spoke to him. He saw my video. Um, he explained to me that he used his charger twice before, um, mainly because his board was not performing. Uh, the first time he charged it, um, he charged it for six hours, according to the instructions. Uh, I told him at that point I was quite concerned because you should not have to charge that board for six hours. Usually it's an average of one to two. Um, the second, and he took it out for a ride. He only got 40 minutes of ride time. Slapped it back on the unit. Light turned green. Took it out for a ride. Got 10 minutes. Came in and plugged the charger into his unit. Plugged it into the wall. And then it popped. And a bunch of white milky stuff came out of his charger. So there's a couple of different reasons that that could happen. Uh, but one of the most that can to definitely make it happen is what's called arcing. And that's where you have poor soldering joints, 
uh, to where the solder is a little too close to the next circuit and power is going to run the ground and if it gets too close it can jump across the other side and there is your arc. Now you can call up your electrical service company and ask them to install what's called an arc fault interrupter. Okay, that's an outlet that goes in that you will take into your plug and you will plug it into it and if the charger decides to arc, you're protected. It's going to shut power down immediately to that board. Um, now, a GFCI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter, is totally different. That's for in case you drop something into the water, like your hair blowing your hair dryer, and you got your sink full of water, and it slips out of your hand, falls into the water. That circuit's going to trip. Now, if you had one of these charges plugged into a GFCI, and this thing arced, that GFCI is not going to trip. It's not designed to do that. So, like I said, I'm working on being able to bring uh, UL chargers that are approved. Uh, through UL uh, to the customers who have the regular CE chargers and they just want to have that little extra safety barrier and just to uh, show you what one would look like this is a back of a charger um, you will see right here in the corner it says UL listed that's what you want to see and to show you a picture of the back of one of our batteries uh, just to, on, uh, I'm sorry on the back of one of our chargers you will see and I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see it this is what's on the back of our charger now you will see right here it's UL listed you'll also see a bunch of other symbols that go across on what it's approved for. There's your CE. Now that's okay. CE is from Europe. Now it's okay if you're going to have CE on there as long as you have that UL. That's the most important one. Now a lady brought in her self-leveling hoverboard asked me to inspect it because the manufacturer was stating that it had a Panasonic battery in it and that was their charger. Uh, the lady would like me to open it up, look at it, try to verify if hers does have a Panasonic in it since she saw my video. So she wants to just make sure she's getting what she paid for. So I opened up her unit and I was not going to take the battery out, I was not going to disconnect the battery, I was not going to open up the battery pack because she decides to return it, I don't want the manufacturer uh, or it's actually not the manufacturer, it's going to be a retailer uh, to turn around and tell her that they are not going to take it back because someone was tampering with the unit. So I told her I couldn't open it up. So, But I was able to get a picture of the battery that was in it. Now here's a picture of the battery and you can see, I'll bring it down a little bit, what it says, rechargeable lithium ion battery, then you see ZDC, specifications of the battery, 10 to 27, I don't know if that's their date code, but I would really like to know what year if it is. Um, and a serial number at the bottom. Now there's another sticker stuck on her battery. And it's right down here at the bottom. I can't read that. And most of us out there are not going to be able to read it either. So I took this picture and I forwarded it to my manufacturer and ask them to please interpret it for me and I ask them to let me know if they see anywhere on there that it says Panasonic uh, in their language. I got a response back that um, there was no indication on there whatsoever that uh, that's a Panasonic battery uh, written in a foreign language 
And as far as the ZDC, um, they, they've never heard of them. So I also called Panasonic myself and spoke directly to their department, not just customer service. Since I'm a business, I don't talk to people just in customer service. I actually talk to individual departments. Um, so I talked to the battery department and for the industrial side, and he explained to me that they do make battery pack or battery cells, but sometimes someone else might make the pack itself. But if they have someone making that pack themselves, they're going to put a UL sticker on it. Um, that's what they want on their batteries. And I explained to him uh, what was on the outside of this battery. I explained to him uh, the serial number and also uh, the charger that went along with it. His response to me, now remember he will, <laughs> he's Panasonic, um, he told me that, um, I hate to tell you, but that's got Chinese written all over it. So I have to tell the lady that I can't guarantee that those are Panasonic batteries in there. There's nothing on the outside of it that indicates that there's Panasonic batteries in there. So I can't guarantee it, and I don't want to void your warranty. Now, the people that sold it to her evidently stated that they got a letter that stated that um, those were Panasonic batteries. Now, if you're going to do that, you might want to open up your board before you start selling it to customers and verifying that it is a true Panasonic battery. And I know through my own personal experience, I would feel a lot more comfortable if I saw Panasonic in English. Because if a foreign language is on there, they know you're not going to be able to read that. You're going to get a translator in order to interpret it. I will show you one of our batteries that go in our self-leveling boards and what's on ours. Now, if you look here, you will see Samsung 22 PM batteries. That's what they run in them, which is very, very important. So once I see that in there uh, on ours, I see Samsung, that makes me feel a whole lot more comfortable knowing that I go inside there to verify what's inside, that most likely I'm going to find Samsung batteries. Not to say that someone doesn't just slap a sticker on just any old battery, um, but my manufacturer knows and understands that I'm going to cut, I'm going into that pack and I'm going to verify it. So it's not going to avoid any warranty whatsoever um, on my end because I'm the one doing it and I have that personal uh, understanding with them that I'm going to do that as well. And if they're not true Samsung batteries in there, um, then we're going to have a, a very long, long discussion. Um, now, you, you can protect yourselves um, in other ways that we are in a process of trying to bring UL listed approved chargers uh, that will be compatible with all these different batteries. And like I said, uh, I'm just waiting to get the response back to him for um, the, the last one that I need. Once I have that, then I will be able to sell to the public a UL listed battery charger uh, for your unit. Okay? And if you have any questions, please contact me at mmultrasports.com. Uh, you can also go to shop.mmultrasports.com. You fill out the contact information, and please, please put your phone number. I've had some that did not put the phone number, and I tried to email them back, and it kicked it back to me saying that it was a bad domain. So if you've not heard from me, then most likely you are one of those ones that I could not contact because I've contacted every single person that's contacted me, uh, either by email or by phone. Nine out of ten times, if you put your phone number on there, well, I'll, I'll do better than that. Ten out of ten times, you put your phone number there, I'm going to call you because there's a lot to be texting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, when I can just take care of it right over the phone. So 
Again, my name is Ralph with Eminem Ultra Sports. If you have any concerns or questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, our number here is 727-412-8020 or 727-544-2843. I hope this information helps and have a great day.